Fantasy Football Happy Hour with Matthew Berry, served by Applebee's. Know your role and shut your mouth, you jabroni. Very underrated use of the word jabroni. It doesn't get used nearly often enough. Three jabronis Except for on this show yeah. where you are looking at a couple of jabronis here. Lawrence Jackson at Laura Don't Lose. Jay Croucher at, at uh, Croucher JD. And, of course, I am Matthew Berry. Welcome to the happy hour. It is noon on Monday on Peacock, but it's 5 o'clock somewhere, including probably in Kansas City. Yes. Where oh, yeah. yes, they sir. are heading to the Super Bowl. Uh, 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 we, we're going to talk about everything getting into this uh, this uh, championship weekend. There was some news in terms of coordinators as well, Jay Croucher. Uh, I like the fact that you were celebrating both the Chiefs and Eagles going to the Super Bowl by wearing a New York Liberty <laughs> sweatshirt. <laughs> the big winners yesterday. In New York. Yeah, I, we're wearing. I, we got green. We got red. Well, you know what? Whatever. Lawrence. <laughs> Lawrence. Lawrence changes it up. You basically <laughs> either wear a New York Liberty thing uh, I'll, or, I'll or Jets. Women's like, sports. It, you, <laughs> but you, you literally only have two sweatshirts. Yeah. <laughs> or I, I feel like I, consistency. Yeah. Consistency, but it's like they're different. Like he's bought. He, I feel like you're like this guy. You moved here from Australia, mm. and you're like the guy in coming to America, where you were like you, you moved here from Australia, <laughs> and you went to like the first like tacky store you could find, and you're like, what do you have? I. I New York sports fan, and that you just you like give me five of those Liberty things and give me uh, give me give me a couple of Jets uh, shirts. Okay, I'm good. I've got my wardrobe for the season. Wow, I didn't know this was gonna be a Jay Crasher segment. I'm just. But, uh, I mean, go. shout What's out up? to Eddie Murphy coming to America. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Not the first time I've been compared to uh, Eddie Murphy and coming <laughs> right to America. Listen, Lord, Matthew. Am I wrong though? <laughs> have good. you ever seen Have you ever seen him in a non I mean, maybe New York he, Jets he, or he, New York he's Liberty? He's a big fan of Sabrina. I. Yeah, right. I right. love him. Sabrina and SQ. Yeah, I'm all in Sabrina. Sabrina yeah. and, uh, and Patrick Mahomes. Those yeah. are my two. Right. Uh, yeah, right. you mentioned that it was uh, 5 p.m. in Kansas City. I think it's 4 a.m. and dark in Cincinnati right now. That's also, also, also true. Uh, wherever the referees live, where do you think it is? I think it's 5 o'clock there, too. Yeah. That was my joke. I was going to say, I'm right. consistent with my wardrobe in a way that the uh, NFL referees are not consistent that been a better with joke. their calls. But, uh, yeah, a lot to get to. Let's start. There were two games yesterday. Right. One uh, was barely a game. That was a fake game of football, San Francisco, Philadelphia. We can outsource that one to Munich, London, any other European I, I, city I that wants a that. game. I said we basically got a London game. Yeah. And, by the way, not my, not my joke. It was yeah. uh, Damien, our producer's joke. And, uh, but I stole it. And then we had one uh, game which was very much played in America, in Kansas oh yeah. City, oh an yeah. epic, which will be remembered, I think, Lawrence, for all the wrong reasons, but uh, can't be understated how uh, intense of a game that was. Yeah, I mean, I think it was a, I think it was a great game, you know, considering some things. Uh, it was blow for blow. You know, you got what most people are calling the two top quarterbacks in the league. You know, just when you think the Chiefs are going to get, a, uh, you know, go away and go, go on a run, Joe Burrow comes back hitting Jamar Chase, T. Higgins. It was it was truly a battle um, of heavyweights in that AFC Championship, much like we all expected it to be. Chiefs barely covered, you know. That's why the spread was two and a half. And all in all, man, a great game, great finish. Let's look. I, I, we'll get to the officiating because that's got to be a, that's going to be a storyline mm -hmm. for you know, you know, not just uh, not just this game, but the next game as uh, as well that we'll talk about here, but. I don't want – that's the shame of it is because so much talk is going on online after the games, during the games, and today, of course, about the officiating. And it takes away from, to your point, Lawrence, the greatness of two different teams. And and especially, like, let's give it up for my guy 15. Let's give it up for Mahomes. Yeah. Like, on yeah. out there on one ankle. And, you know, I mean, I feel like if there was one theme other than bad officiating for the weekend, it was sort of war of attrition – and who could gut it out the most, yeah. right? I mean, like, so and we'll, we'll focus here for a second, but whether it, whether it was the Bengals' offensive line, yeah. whether it was Mahomes running around on one leg with, like, no wide receivers yeah. because they kept falling throughout the game, whether it was, like, okay, who's the emergency quarterback for the 49ers, whether it's Jalen Hurts, who, who's clearly not 100%. Yep. Um, the Eagles are still the healthiest team, I think, in the NFL, but Jalen Hurts is clearly not 100%. Um, it just felt like a war of attrition throughout the day uh, in terms of teams that could survive uh, with whoever else they had. Mahomes, I thought, again, whether it was a high ankle sprain or whatever it was, like we thought a season was over when they played Jacksonville. And then he came back and he limps around and he clearly wasn't 100% in this game. 
but you know what? His arm was, and he made some unbelievable plays in this one. Two touchdowns, 326, 29 of 43. He just, I mean, as you see the numbers right there, I, I did not turn the ball over. Uh, and, you know, this, the stats are just sort of ridiculous, right? He, he's the youngest quarterback in NFL history to reach 10 career playoff wins. Um, you know, three lead-changing drives in his playoff career with one minute or less on the clock, which he did right there. I mean, um, before turning, uh, like, here's, here's the crazy stat. Most passing touchdowns in the postseason before turning 28 years old. That's right. Patrick Mahomes has 32. Number two on the list is Brett Favre with 18. Yeah. He's, I mean, he's 14 touchdown passes ahead of number two in terms of most touchdown passes in the postseason under the age of 28. Uh, look, cr NFL announcers get criticized all the time for just like, you know, going crazy on Mahomes. You going Jordan Drexler? On, like, I'm just a little bit, right? But like... I'm, the man's he, earned he, it. He, yeah. People, people are, you know, he kind of got that Steph Curry syndrome. He's so good, you know, all the time, always in the like when you think championships and being in the mix, he's always there. Outside of the years where Steph Curry was hurt or whatever, the Warriors are always there. Um, uh, uh, actually, Mahomes did turn the ball over the one time. Remember the fumble where it yeah, slipped yeah, yeah, out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cincinnati didn't throw capitalized. It right. Yeah, throw an interception, but that's a yeah. Didn't right, right. By Cincinnati one. capitalized, but even with that, even with losing the receivers, they had a couple of drives after that where they were three and out, three and out. Um, but they he he did it when it mattered the most. He made the play like he is that guy. It should be no more question. Like a lot of people on TV on other networks and shows were saying, hey, Joe Burrow already quarterbacking better than him. No. No, he ain't. Not today. Yeah. Joe Burrow is one of them dudes. Right. Right? He went, like, if you want to say he the second best quarterback, I ain't going to argue that, but it's one guy, and he wore number 15 right there. The the other quote we could have shown at the beginning of the show uh, from Kelsey was, <laughs> Burrow had my ass, yeah. which is 1,000% uh, right. I will say to the point about this game, Jay, though, is – I. Normally, when you're watching a game, like, well, this game's over. Like, you felt like the Eagles were going to win that, I think, from start to finish. We all picked the Eagles on Thursday's yeah. episode of this this show. But last night, uh, against the in the Chiefs-Bengals game, I was just like, Chiefs winning this game. And then Mahomes throws out, I'm like, Bengals are winning Bengals this game. Are, yeah. 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 And then I was yeah. just like, yeah. and then they were driving. I'm like, uh, Chiefs are winning this game. Yeah. And then once again, like, up. Oh, and then they and then they throw the, they convert the fourth and sixth to Jamar Chase, you know, what covered by two people. I'm like, oh, Bengals are winning this game. Like, I went back and forth a million different times during this game of like, you know, I think, where I was convinced the other team was going to win. Yeah, a couple things. One, this is clearly a legacy game for Mahomes. I mean, this will be one of the first games that we talk about with him ever. He went down 0-4 to Joe Burrow, including getting beaten yeah. in his own house two years in a row by Burrow in the AFC title game, despite being favored in both games. That would have been significant. The other thing that is not really coming across my timeline enough Kansas City lost like 20% of their starters Thank in the you. game yeah, yeah. last night. That's insane. Everyone's talking about the refs. I mean, he lost, Mahomes loses Juju, Kadarius Tony, Mecole Hardman. They lose Gay and Sneed on defense, and they still right. get through and the And by game. the way, there were questions before the game whether Travis Kelsey exactly. could play because his, his lower back um, tightened up. Justin Watson was inactive for this game as well, somebody that's seen a decent amount of snaps this, this year. And so that's right. He's out there trying to win with Noah Gray. Like, they're going two tight ends, three tight ends. They're using Isaiah Pacheco as a receiver. Uh, he, I mean, you know, Marquez Valdez-Scantling is now his number one. Yes. Marquez Valdez-Scantling, who's like a sort of mid-tier number four, is like suddenly becomes the best wide receiver in football for, you know, 90, 60 Mahomes minutes. Mahomes was treating Valdez-Scantling like Derek Carr treats Devontae Adams. Yes. Like there was all that was left. It was just where, where MBS is an do? open, then where are we going? Yeah, Sky it, it, Moore. The, the reason that you said it wasn't mentioned on your timeline a lot about, you know, the Chiefs shortcomings, that's because people don't like the Chiefs. They don't like Mahomes. And the Chiefs and seeing them winning. I, I don't I know. Disagree. I disagree. I, I, hang on. I see so many. No, 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 no. I'm no. up here defending the best quarterback. He don't need defending. No, it, here's, what, here's what they don't like. They don't like his brother. Hey, okay, I didn't want to say that. That's true. They don't like his brother. It's, it's, people like the Chiefs. Yeah, people it, like Andy Reid. It, it is that. Like it is Mahomes. that. They it is definitely that. They don't. Why, and I'm not. I'm not sitting here trying to throw shade at Jax Mahomes or no. That's or the, Brittany that's Mahomes. the facts. I'm just like the. But the fact of the matter is, is that. Whether you do or not, the people don't like them. Yeah. People like, yeah. like, yeah. other than like, you know, hardcore they can't get Chiefs fans. It. 
People do not like yeah, those two he, people. <laughs> um, just Amer in terms of how they presented themselves to America, like, um, and, and so. But yes, I, so I disagree with that because I think people really like Andy Reid. They like Mahomes. I think people love Travis Kelsey. Uh, you know. So, um, so what I meant to say was they I do think people like Juju Smith-Schuster. Yeah, they like. Like he's personable. He's also on TikTok. He's the, somebody on TikTok uh, that you like. Yeah, <laughs> that that's what's crazy to me. All you just mentioned, like, how could you like? not like these dudes but like like you said it's like they may like Mahomes but they might not like him because of uh, like right. his, it don't got nothing to do like he don't be out here that doing. was one of the things that showed up on my timeline like oh uh, like what, what what are we gonna have to what can we deal with better like for the next two weeks are we gonna <laughs> can we deal with like Eli yeah. Apple and Mike Hinton uh, you know Mike Hilton running his mouth or can we deal with like you know or Brittany Lynn and Jackson Mahomes which one could you do which one would you rather deal with um I think I would rather <laughs> deal with Jackson and Brittany. Me too, because like to be I, could, I, I just block that out. Right, like exactly. that means nothing to like. I don't. I just be watching Mahomes, man. I, nice little holding yeah. call from Eli Apple. Uh, as was we we're waiting for it, the DPI from Eli Apple yeah. finally uh, gets the uh, the penalty. <laughs> but with Mahomes, like all the talk about him and Burrow and Allen and Herbert, whoever. Like in terms of what goes into the betting lines, it's Patrick Mahomes tier one by himself. He means more to how much a team is favored more than any other quarterback, and it's not particularly close. What he does for passing offense, like, no other, no one else can do this without wide receivers. No. He doesn't need wide receivers, and they still have by far the best passing offense in the league. Again, we already mentioned Justin Watson was inactive. Kadarius Toney played four snaps. Miko Hardman played 15 snaps. Juju Smith-Schuster played less than 50% of the snaps. Marquez Valdez-Scantling, who, um, you know, ha has, prior to this game, had only two games in his uh, career with the Chiefs with over 75 receiving yards. He'd had only one game with five or more receptions since joining the Chiefs prior to this game, and he winds up with six for 116 and a touchdown. No one saw this coming except <laughs> one guy. The other bargain bin guy that, again, wouldn't want in the cash game, but in DFS, I think it's sort of interesting, and I wouldn't mind kind of a – you know, uh, putting a bet on any time touchdown is Marquez Valdez Scantling. Yeah, yeah. Just because I think he'll see some Eli Apple, and I think Eli Apple, who's been running his mouth doesn't on make a social lot of friends. media, <laughs> he doesn't make a lot of friends. And uh, I just think uh, Eli Apple is burnable, is uh, is oh, very sure. burnable, sure. and I yeah. and I think that he'll find himself on MVS. They're going to take a couple of shots and try to pick on Eli Apple in this game, and I think MVS is the most likely candidate. You could see some Justin Watson, uh, but. Yeah. Anyway, I don't mind a, uh, you know, a small bet on uh, anytime touchdown for MBS. Yeah. By and and here's the play right here. Uh, by anytime touchdown, by a small bet, I meant you know thousands of dollars. <laughs> um, plus three thirty three. Yeah. Plus plus, plus three thirty anytime touchdown there. Um, I wish our editors when they were playing that fact they could have cut out me mentioning some Justin Watson. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to say. Was, I was about to say that, that's I the meat. Was, of the, that's the meat of it. Right. I think he was a healthy scratch there. I, I, you know, if I'm gonna victory lap with my with my clips, guys, could you cut out the part that I got wrong? As long as like as long as we're like, you know. Um, but whatever, yeah. And and by the way, that's not exactly why it happened. It happened, you know. I predict you actually called three wide receivers going down for the Chiefs and MBS <laughs> yeah, becoming Devontae Adams. You know what? Well, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is that we did we did say that MVS would was a good cheap option in DFS. He was obviously all the winning lineups I saw had MVS, including mine. Right. I had a really nice yeah. day at DFS because uh, I I went I went heavy. I went I went with a Mahomes. I went with a Mahomes. I went with an anti-Travis Kelsey stack because I figured everyone would go with Kelsey. So I went with, you know, yeah. uh, Mahomes and uh, MVS. And the the anyway. other thing with MVS is that Mahomes missed him twice over the middle. Mahomes could have – MVS lost yes. – there was 40 Definitely. yards on the table. So he could have had, you know, 150 yards and a touchdown, eight catches very, very easily. Uh, huge game for him. Hopefully they won't be so dependent on him in the Super Bowl if we – uh, assume that they'll get at least a couple of guys back. Uh, but yeah, MBS was the story last night. Yeah, Why and not? by the way, I just want to give the kid credit just because he is somebody that has been maligned over the years, whether it was in Green Bay or since coming to Kansas City. He doesn't earn enough targets. He's he's somebody that has he's just a he's just a sprinter. You know what I mean? He's just he's he's a he's a go route and that's it. And the fact of the matter is is that when they needed him the most you know, a game in which, hey, everyone is, like, Get it's up. you. Yeah. And, like, we got no one else, right? You know, like, 
you're the only guy. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, he stepped up. He stepped up and he produced in clutch moments and he made some great catches as well. And, you know, people were yelling at me on Twitter because I was just like, I, I you know, Mahomes made this, he made this one great catch, MVS did, where he had to twist to the other side and catch it up in the air. Bad throw. And, and right, and Romo, <laughs> Romo was throw? just like, Romo was talking about how great a throw it was from Mahomes. Right. And there are people arguing on Twitter like it was actually a good throw because the coverage was on the other hip and he threw it away from the coverage. Mm -hmm. So the only place that he could make the catch and regardless of whether it was a great throw or bad throw or or, you know, could have been a little bit better throw. The fact of the matter is, is regardless, all the praise was about Mahomes. And I'm like, this guy just <laughs> literally had to change direction yeah, in midair yeah, and yeah, make a catch, yeah. you know, yeah. catch like this on the other side. He was he was turned this way and he made it this way. Wes Welker. Wes Welker couldn't do that in the Super Bowl. Couldn't no, make that catch. And, no, uh, he could yeah, not. So I just anyway, I just arms. anyway, MBS is <laughs> all the flowers to Marquez Valdez Scantling, who now has two career playoff games with over 100 receiving yards. He had one in that Tampa Bay game with the Packer again Packers playing the Buccaneers in 2020. Can you imagine Mahomes at some point on the bench, Mahomes and Andy Reid, they go up to MVS and like, we need you to be Tyreek. <laughs> <Right. laughs> you're you're, you're the, the guy. guy. Yeah, you're the captain now, MVS. Yeah, right. But the captain again also was Travis Kelsey, oh, who yeah. uh, just did what Travis Kelsey does, goes seven for 78, touchdown. I think the play we'll remember most though is the, uh, the failed hook and ladder, which honestly might have set hook and ladder plays back 50 years. Yeah. Because as we Here take a is. look at the play now, I don't know why teams don't do this more often. Maybe they don't do it more often because of what Kelsey just did there. Yeah. And the poor but, like, but too by the far way, apart. But but no, but honestly, with a with a better flip and I'm like it's just low. But if 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 that if that hits him in stride, such McKinnon's a, got a cut touchdown there. It's such a bad throw. It's so they feel like you would have practiced that more. They need rugby training. Bring him in from Australia, Matthew. Right. I mean, we'll, it we'll was practice. a good play, him just catching the ball a couple yards beyond the first down. So luckily that in that didn't end up in a turnover. It, I, I, I just like the fact that Travis Kelsey playing with a bad back in a game in which he goes seven for seventy eight and a touchdown. He ties Rob Gronkowski for the most receiving touchdowns by a tight end in the playoffs in the NFL history. Um and has scored at least one touchdown now in 11 of 17 career games. Just unbelievable game from start to finish for Travis Kelsey, playing with a bad back. After the game, he's the MVP. He calls out the mayor, calling him a jabroni. Burrow had my ass. Whole thing. And what, Lawrence, what Jay Croucher decides to focus on is like, whatever, a failed hook and ladder. Like a, just a slightly <laughs> low throw Jake. on the hook and ladder. Like there's 8 billion things you could say positive about Travis Kelsey, but this one, the, you know, I you mean, know, yeah. the Australian, the Australian a-hole over here. I like mean, just, you know, this is, uh, come on. Like, I was about to start talking about how he 34 years old, bad back, and they doubling him. He can't run no faster than the 4'9 <laughs> and right. the 40, but he always open. Always catching touchdowns like we go. I, I I mean, a lot of people will say Gronk is the GOAT at tight end, but I want to know what Travis Kelsey got to do from here on out to be the GOAT because that boy be balling. Did he get a little little carried away at the end, Lawrence, with the game to still to win, to win the Super Bowl? Did he get too carried away? Are you happy with that? With, you, you talk about on the, the stage. Did he go a little bit too nah, much? Hell like no, hell no, 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 no. I mean, that's, no. that's Cincinnati Mary. What right, are you exactly. talking about? Come on. He did not, and I'll tell you why. Because all he's doing is he didn't say anything about Philadelphia. It'd be one thing if he's like saying like, oh, uh, you know, because what the Cincinnati mayor, I don't know if everyone saw what the Cincinnati mayor <laughs> oh, did. Yeah. The Cincinnati mayor made a proclamation basically saying that like they wanted to investigate what a uh, paternity suit because there, there might be that Joe Burrow might be Mahomes' daddy. Right. I mean, like he was just like he that's declared good. this whole thing and oh, that he was going to content. and that he was going to Burrow head. Yeah, you know, I mean, like the whole thing, like the that mayor, did it for the Bengals. That did, that did it for yeah, the Bengals. And I'm just so my point is, Travis Kelsey, like if you talk the talk, you must walk the walk. Yes. And the Bengals did not walk the walk. Um, they didn't ask the mayor to, like, do that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, well, we ain't putting this on Joe Burrow. <laughs> right. We like Joe Burrow. We like Joe <laughs> Burrow. But, you know, but honestly, but Eli Apple, you know, popping off on Twitter the way he does and, you know, and, um, uh, you know, um, Hilton talking about Burrowhead. He's the one who coined Burrowhead. And anyway, so was, he's, I think Travis Kelsey is completely justified in calling the mayor a jabroni. The yeah. mayor is a jabroni. <laughs> he is a jabroni. You know, and, and I feel, I've said this before, I've said this before on my old show. Back, I used to, this was a running joke on my old show. But we should talk now to Cincinnati here and just talk about the fact, I always say Bengals fun. What happens when you root for the Bengals? You get boned. 
You get boned, right? And I just and I feel bad for Bengals fans. I have for years and years and years. They got they constantly, you know, they got boned by all the Andy Dalton years and and um, you know, and now I I feel like they got they kind of got boned by the Cincinnati mayor, and, and, <laughs> and right because like, dude, you ain't out here with us, you know. And I feel like they got boned by the refs. Like I. You hate, like, that's what sucks is, right, the Chiefs put on an epic performance, right? And Mahomes just, like, gutting it out. And, again, they they're, they they were down, what, seven starters, right? You know, like five, 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 five starters and another one who's less than 100%. And, you know, and, and we but we have to talk about the officiating. Yeah, I mean, as someone who is heavily invested financially in the Chiefs, yeah. and uh, we've got our Super Bowl tickets we do. Uh, from Vegas. That I went we to check how much money we're making <laughs> yeah. if, the, if the Chiefs win. And <laughs> as I was watching that Taking game. Taking more of Ben MGM's money, baby. I was thinking, like, oh, that's that's a nice thing that happened there. Oh, right. we get the third and nine play. We get to do that again when they wave the play. Like dead. that was just so no many bizarre sense. Moments. I've never seen that before. Well, oh, we're just going to do a do-over. Yeah, like, we're what? Do, we did the whole play. They ran off the field. Is this a playground? <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, no, apparently no. It's the AFC Championship game. Like, it's literally like, that's the kind of thing, like you're playing flag football with your boys in the backyard. And even then, you want to call for a do-over. And everyone, half the group is like, nah, man, we ain't doing a do-over. Like, uh, what are you doing? How is uh, this a first down? That's not oh. a first down. Right. <laughs> when he reaches this out. Is the, this is also, the, for those listening, this is the MBS play where he re, he extends. Should have been a fumble ball, as well. But, like, but, you know, as we talked about, like, as far as I, I'm not an officiating expert, except it's I, I know what's bad when I see it. Yeah. Like, right. It's I don't the goal it's, line. They, thank you. It's not the goal line. That's the <laughs> part. Is it's, it's, where, it's where the knee goes down. It's where the knee goes down. Um, and, and so... He's he's got, but he but, brings but it like, back in, right? Yeah. He brings it back in, and like you get, like think about this, like a guy runs and then he like suddenly reverses two yards and gets tackled. Yeah. That's where the ball. That's where the ball. It's not where it's it's not college where you get forward progress. No. it's it's where you're tackled, right? I mean, am I wrong were, on this? Like I, you know, like I think it's the you, fact that it's yeah, had he landed the ball down and that's where right. it finished, but it, the play didn't finish there. It finished right. with it back in. Right. I, I didn't pulled understand it back that. In, like his knee's not down. When he reaches, if his if his, if he had reached to the first down and his knee goes down, then right, okay, that makes sense. But when he pulls it back in and then he gets tackled, right? I There's, that one was a weird one. To the me. third and nine one, I think that one's the worst. The fact that Frank Clark didn't get called for roughing the passer in the end zone on Joe Burrow, Joe, where he takes like he takes three, three extra steps, steps and then three extra bang. steps and, and pushes Burrow, and it, that's clearly. And I and I, listen, I'm actually okay with them swallowing their whistles in that particular case yep. uh, because it's like it's a late game and you don't want like them to extend the drive. Okay, fine. But then then the point is is like on the other side when Aussie hits him, you know, literally like he, it's it's a bang bang play. This is this is uh, this is third and four and Mahomes scrambling. He's speed. trying to get to wow. the and, and there he is, just like literally like it's a bang bang play. And if you if you see like when they slow it down, I don't know if we're gonna have the, the slow mo, yeah, but there you go. go. You see like there if you see it the, you see their feet at the very bottom. If we run it again, look at the feet at the very bottom. It sort of gets tripped up. Mahomes kind of trips over his feet, which causes him to fall. And if he doesn't follow him out of bounds, Mahomes might have turned up the field and got like, I guess by by a technicality, it is a foul. But you hate to see that decide a season and it did in some ways it did at the same time Lawrence like that gets called a foul every single time like as soon as that happened I was like all right that's in real time that's minus 10,000 yeah, to get called course, course. after this you know after this whole season has went you know it's just hard to know what is and what what's a push out of bounds what's a roughing the passer like it's we've seen like the worst of them like especially in the season so it just comes down to the point where, like, when it when you see it happen or you see it might happen, you just be like, well, let's see if they're going to just throw it on this particular time because we don't truly know what it is because we've seen the tickiest, tackiest roughing the passes get caught this season. And then when they get driven into the mud, you know, or field turf, they all play on that now. You know, sometimes they don't get the call. It's just... 
I don't know, man. It's it's I don't know. Sometimes I just it ain't even worth stressing about. There were so many moments where the Bengals got off the field on third down. It's like, oh no, we're coming back. Oh, what is it this right. time? Oh, official waved the play dead. No one realized. Oh, there's a holding penalty that kind of wasn't really a hold. It was just, just all I, over again. The place. Bengals got. I feel bad for Bengals fans. You guys I, got boned. You guys <laughs> did. I I was rooting. I and this is me. Like people always, because I'll bitch about the refs, uh, refs especially when it comes to the Commanders, right? But um uh. And so they'll say, oh, you're a homer. And that's true, by the way. <laughs> I'm completely a homer, obviously. But in this one, like, I was legit rooting for the Chiefs, guys. Like, I went to – I was at Arrowhead <laughs> last weekend. I, my wife came out. Like, we, we, NBC had that game. And then I stayed and watched the game and the Chiefs. And, the you know, everyone was so incredibly – and Kansas City was welcoming to me. My wife bought, like, a Chiefs hat. You know, like, whatever. Like, I was rooting for the Chiefs. You and I both had a, a significant financial <laughs> interest – in the Chiefs winning, I picked them on the show. Chiefs minus two and a half. I'm in playoff pools where I've got a Mahomes Kelsey stack. Like I wanted the Chiefs to win, and even with my homerism of desperately wanting the Chiefs to win, I'm like, Bengals got boned. Like, and, and I don't know that the Bengals win the game if it gets called correctly. You still don't know if that 15, you know, that if the roughing the the quarterback play doesn't happen, like. Does Mahomes still complete a long pass? Do they get a touchdown? It goes to overtime. You know, you never know. To, I just The one thing I want to mention before we talk about Higgins and Chase, uh, who had great games, is that like Chris Jones won the game for yeah. Kansas City. He oh, won yeah. that right. game. And for all the talk, all the calls, Cincinnati were marching down the field live after Burrow completes the third and 16 to Hurst, which I don't know how he got so open. The Bengals at that point were like minus 250 to win the yeah. game and get to the Super Bowl. And then they didn't because Chris Jones made a play. He was amazing. Uh, DB Trent McDuffie, he fell on that play. Yep. That's how uh, it was a good route by uh, Hayden Hurst, yep. I believe, who caught it. He At the break, he fell down got open so yeah yep. but so, incredible game from chris jones but on the bengals side but yeah i mean like and the truth of the matter is is like the mahomes turnover like it's a gift like yeah. you guys got a, in addition like you game like was you, done the game was done if, if they can they get a couple more first downs yep. and even if they get a field goal game was done but mahomes just does this like just has a brain fart or something yeah. like that yeah. and like ball slips out Couldn't and all of a sudden they, 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 like nothing there was no pressure around him it was just literally like Self-inflicted wound there, and so you got the the Bengals got a gift there. But just you would have liked to seen the game without officiating controversy. That's yep. all. I mean, I'm just you know it, that's it, it, that's it, what's frustrating. It, it's, it's tough too in these championship games where everybody's watching. Yes. When you got a one o'clock slate and there's eight games, there's not the fo- the same type of focus. When you get the fo- when there's one game on of this magnitude, it definitely heightens well, that as well. And, and they want to get it right. I don't. I, it, I don't believe all the, you know, so many people on Twitter are like NFL's rigged. I do not believe that at all. <laughs> I do not believe that at all. I want to be very clear about that. I don't believe that at all. They want to get it right. I believe the officials on the field want to get it right. I believe the NFL wants to get it right. I think what's frustrating is is the inconsistency from yeah. game to game, from crew to crew. Yeah. And, and that there's certain things that don't seem to make total sense. And we'll talk about this more when we get to the Eagles game, but the thing that is really curious to me is that they have the ability within the rules of the game to use the replay assist. For New York to call down and say, nope, this was the right, the call was wrong on the field, this is what it should be. And it feels very arbitrary as to when that gets used and when it doesn't. And that's the weird part to me. That's yeah, the part yeah. I think needs to be much more consistent and figured out in the offseason. Yeah, that was very peculiar. Last thing on the Chiefs, running game didn't get anything going. I think that was just because they were able to oh. stack the box because none of the receivers could get any separation. We didn't read too much into that. We'll talk about Pacheco and McKinnon uh, and the matchup in the Super Bowl uh, as we get closer. It, it, they just couldn't get anything going, so I think they just felt like they had that they had more strength with Pacheco and he was just on the field and then you know, credit the Bengals' pass rush for getting into it. So there's a lot of just kind of dump-offs to Pacheco, who uh, set a career high with uh, with five receptions, I believe. On the other side of the ball, yeah, it, I mean, it's weird, right? I mean, Samaje Pirine, actually the more effective runner than Joe Mixon. Pirine, five for, 25, five for 22. Mixon, eight for 19. Both of them catch three balls in the passing game, but they just didn't get much from any of their running backs here. Credit the, the Chiefs' defensive line here. Higgins finally had a nice game. Yes. He's been kind of quiet throughout these playoffs. But 6 for 83 and a touchdown, leading the team in targets, as you see it there on your screen. And then Jamar Chase, 6 for 75. And for me, the biggest play was that, you know, they fourth and six. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, again, like that was one where I was like, oh, the Chiefs, are, the Bengals won this game. Yeah. It was fourth and six, and they go for it. 
and just an unbelievably ballsy call and throw by Burrow to throw into double coverage, and Jamar Chase comes down with it. Yep. I, I mean, believe this is, this, is, this is the play right here. Yeah. You know, he's basically throwing from his 50, and he gets it down to the six. Yeah. Jamar Chase does. Like, I mean, just an unbelievable play, catch throw. Um, yeah, really, maybe, uh, really impressive. Maybe Kirk Cousins should have thrown that ball to Justin Jefferson uh, at the end of the Giants game. Maybe just it put it up in it double coverage. Doesn't the matter. Shot. The give, shot. give your man a shot. Cut to Kirk Cousins. You know, <laughs> it's been a couple of weeks since the playoffs are over. Everything sort of died down. Let me just tune over to Peacock, see what's going on, you know. And all of a sudden, just Australian get, 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 yeah. New York Liberty hoodie. Yeah, just, yeah some, some, some guy with an Australian accent and a New York Liberty sweatshirt is taking shots at me. Why am I catching shrapnel? I've been out for two and a half weeks. What the hell? All right. On that note, we're going to go to break. When we come back, we'll break down the NFC right. Championship game. Credit the greatest the game that Munich never saw. Yeah. Credit to the Chiefs. Credit to Andy Reid. Go Chiefs. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBC Sports and Rotoworld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched, or at least being too lazy to click out of it after the you know, autoplay just kept it going. So either way, thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, 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 okay, respectfully, please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news, fantasy headlines from Rotoworld, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.